have such a great needle felting tutorial for you today and it would be so brilliant if you could subscribe but especially hit that notification button because unless you hit the notification button you won't get notified of new tutorials that I pop up on a regular basis. So thanks for joining me, let's go in and get started and make sure you stick around to the end for another great tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make a needle felted Jack Russell brooch with some really great techniques you can apply to lots of your animal projects. So getting started, we have here a Jack Russell template, which is a really simple shape, but I'll come back to that in a moment. I've got five different colored wools, which I'm going to be using for this project, as well as a simple uh, standard 38 star felting needle. This is the template I'm using. The important thing is that you get the shape face correct for the dog or animal that you are making. That's the most important step in getting started. The other thing I like to do is use a wool felt backing to actually felt on, which makes it so much easier. It gives you a lot more control and gives you a really firm finish. So I've taken my face shape I've just cut around it, decided what size I wanted it. Didn't want it too big because I'm going to be using this as a brooch. And I just draw a simple line around that stencil. And that is it. As I said, most important thing, make sure that the head shape is correct for the particular dog that you are making. And that will mean that the actual finish will look so much better and will represent your animal fully. Now getting started is really easy. All I'm going to do, because it's Jack Russell, is lay down uh, some carded white wool and fill in the entire shape. Really quickly, really simply. And having that line means that you've got a really easy guide to follow to make that happen. I'm just using a single needle here. As I said, this is a 38 star, which is a standard needle. And before I get to the muzzle area, I'm going to pop some really dark carded wool underneath the white. And this is for a technique I'm going to show you at the end of the video when we are adding the face details. And this makes, um, makes it really easy to add some nice subtle details using a reverse felting needle. So just pop some really dark contrasting wool just on the section of the nose area, not too much, just a, a nice good layer just on the end of the face. And then we're going to take the white carded wool and we're going to felt over the top of that so it won't be visible once we have finished. Make sure that you pull your mat regularly away from your felting mat. I'm just using a hessian rice mat here. If you don't do that, then it's going to stick to the mat. Um, and I'm actually going to pop another piece of wool felt underneath that, just so that I don't um, cause any damage to the mat and it's much easier to clean. Always use a topper underneath whatever you're working on, especially when you're flat felting, because that wool pokes through and really does stick to the mat underneath. So using those guides, continue to use your wool to just fill in all of that space. We're going to probably do two or three layers. Um, so this is the first base layer. I want a really nice shape. I'm using carded wool. You can use wool top as well. Um, I've, I've used wool top in the past with um, just as much success. But I'm just using the carded wool because it just takes a little bit less time to felt. I think the whole process of this um, particular brooch takes less than an hour. So it doesn't take too long at all. And they look amazing when they're finished. They make beautiful gifts as well. You can add a brooch back or you can actually just sort of mount them in a little box frame as well, which looks lovely, especially if you're giving it as a gift. So keep working this wool. Keep using your needle to make sure that it's really firmly stuck to that wool felt back in. Now I'm using 100% wool felt because I find that it, the wool, that um, the carded wool sticks to it really well, get a really nice finish, but you could use um, a blended wool uh, felt back also. 
So continuing to felt until it's nice and firm. I've got a few gadgets here that you could try some multi-tools. You only really need a single needle, but if you want to speed it up, um, certainly um, use the multi-tools that you have. If you've just got one needle, then that will be the one that I'm using most of the time. Working around, you want to make sure that the black lines that you created earlier are actually visible as you create your shape and build it up. Probably aiming to have a thickness or a depth of about minimum five mils and work around those edges. What you don't want is any sort of wispy thin areas. Everything wants to be equal around those edges so that when you actually cut it, cut around it when you've finished, that you've not got any thin wispy areas sort of hanging over the edge. And also, when you want to smooth the top, if you want to, you can use a finer needle. This one's a 40 star, so this will reduce the needle marks, but it's not absolutely necessary. So a 38 star will do the whole job. And as you can see here, I'm just now tucking in those edges. As I said, you don't want any thin wispy bits hanging over. It all needs to be equal and firm all around the sides. So work those sides, make sure that they're nice and flat and that black line is visible. That is the stencil line that you created at the beginning because that will actually get trimmed off. And that will also mean that you are maintaining the correct shape for the animal that you are creating. So continue to work around the sides, firming it up, firming it up making sure that wool is really firm and compacted. It's really important. Remember, this is um, going to be um, a brooch, this particular one. So it's going to be taken on and off. So you don't want any wispy, thin areas. And then the next section we're going to work on now is we're going to start laying down some colour. And I've got a really nice tan colour for the Jack Russell. And you can work on a particular dog if you want, work on their particular colours. I am just going to do some loose, general Jack Russell shading. And what I'm going to do is work from this pattern that I have here and lay down that colour in those particular areas. Make sure that you leave a white area down the front of the head free because that's a typical Jack Russell marking. And again, just as you did with the white, you're just going to pop on this lovely tan color that I have here. It's a really nice, rich color and it's a perfect Jack Russell color. And make sure you take that color right over the edge so that it covers this side of the area that you're working on as well. Because when you look at it from top down, you don't want to see any white areas. You want that to fill in that gap. So make sure that you pull that wool over and felt that in nice and securely. Continue to lay the color down. Make sure again that it's nice and firmly felted. Make sure you keep that white stripe down the front of the face visible and then add another layer on as well. We don't want this to be thin. We want a really nice good block of color. And where the when you come to the edge of this color, just use your needle to thin out those edges so you don't have a sort of line finish. You want to just drag out those edges with your needle just so the the color sort of wisps out a little bit and then coming to this mouth shape it's just a very simple line but the most important thing is that you use the tiniest tiniest amount of wool the thinnest wisp you can imagine and then probably a little bit less than that so as you can see here i'm just pulling this wool through my fingers, I've got a sort of dark contrasting color, but not black. And I'm just popping that down using that stencil as a guide where I think the mouth should be. And I'm using the 40 triangle again here because it's a thinner needle. So what I'm not doing is um, 
disturbing the shape that I've already created. So just gently push that wool into the mouth shape, keeping hold of the end of that wool as you do it so that you don't lose it. And just go really carefully and delicately. You may end up doing this a few times. Um, that's absolutely fine. That's quite normal. You'll pop it on. It'll be in the wrong position and just whip it off and start again. Best way rather than trying to persevere. The wool is so thin. It's so easy to remove. It's not going to cause any problems. So that is my top tip is just to just start again with that. And then just delicately move the um, line that you've created into a position that you're happy with. And then just at the front of the muzzle, create a little tiny indentation which separates the face from the actual mouth. So it looks like you actually have two little areas. And once you're happy with the position of the mouth, we then can get ready to start to work on the nose. Just keep double checking though that you're happy with that position. I'm just playing around with this now and you will do exactly the same. You'll go back and you can also use your fingers as well to, to just adjust the shape of the face to make sure that you don't lose that lovely shape that you have already created. Now, when it comes to the nose, you are going to use the tiniest amount of wool again. And it's just going to sit on the end of the nose. I'm just going to just tidy up that area there before I do so. So make sure you've got no loose areas. Make sure it's nice and firm. Really important because we don't want to lose that shape. And this tiny bit of black, we're just going to pop on the end. Actually, I'm not using black. I'm using a really dark brown so it's it's slightly more subtle than black but black is is just um as good but i've got a, a, a sort of almost black brown color here and i'm taking the smallest amount and i'm just going to roll it in my fingers sort of slightly mat it roll it in my hands and then i'm going to roll it backwards and forwards so what i'm going to do is actually you know create a little sort of circular shape I'm going to stick that on the end of the nose using that 40 triangular needle because it's much more delicate. And I'm just going to tack it on gently just so that it holds. And again, as we did with the tan color, make sure you go over the side of the nose so there's no visible white areas. And as with the mouth, you probably will end up doing this a few times. The nose is a little bit tricky just a bit fiddly, so but it's really important that you get that shape right and you get the positioning correct. So really sort of spend some time working on this until you are happy with the position and with the shape. And start with less than you need. You can add a little bit more, which I am going to do in a moment. Keep checking from top down to make sure as well as I said, that you haven't got any visible white areas. I'm adding a little bit on there. The nose just looks a little bit sparse at the moment. So I really wanted just to fill that out a little bit more. And then the next section we're going to work on is the ear. And I've also created a tiny little template for this, but it really is basically a, a, a triangle with a soft point. So don't get too hung up on using a stencil, but make sure it is in propor proportion to the dog that you are working on. Um, I've made sure that when I've done the stencil that all the proportions are correct. Now I'm just taking some of that tan wool but I'm going to blend it with some darker wool as well and a little bit of white because it's going to sit on top of the same colour so I, I want to make sure that it stands out a little bit so that we don't lose that color. And I'm also going to add some shading underneath the ear in a while. So just work around that stencil. Be super careful with your fingers here. Use finger guards if you um, uh, are, are new to felting, especially um, to make sure that you don't prick yourself. And just create a simple shape by using that template. You can do this freehand, but just make sure that size is correct. And that top area, um, 
where we are just folding it over to create the shape. Keep that loose because that's going to attach to the dog. So now you've created the outline, you can bring in those edges so we've got a nice, thick, firm ear. We want it to be quite thick and firm, not as thick as the brooch, but we want it to be firm enough so that we can move it around and it will hold its shape. And keep lifting that regularly because it will stick to your mat. I've got a lot of fuzzy bits there, but we're going to felt those in. So continue to work on that shape, felting it nice and flat and firm. Now, once you're happy with the shape, then take the template again and pop that on top of the ear and you can just really start to work on creating the final shape. It's um, a really good way to make sure that the size is still correct and it also helps create the finished shape. I'm just working the edges here. Um, I've gone for a slight C shape on one side. It just gives the ear more dimension and also helps to create a truer representation of the shape you would see on a Jack Russell ear. So continue, make sure it's again nice and firm, no wispy bits, you can trim around those edges later on. So don't worry too much about any little loose bits that are sticking up, you're always going to have those. So don't worry about that, they can be dealt with later. And then we're going to pop that onto the top of the Jack Russell head. Now, as you can see here, when I did the template, I put a little couple of lines there so you could actually see exactly where that ear needs to sit so that it's going to look like it is in the correct position. It's not going to look off balance and it's going to sit exactly where the Jack Russell ear should. When you attach it, you are going to attach just the top part of that ear only to the side of the head where I showed you those little markings were. Um, that is so that the ear is actually raised away from the head. So you've got that really nice three dimensional effect. So from top down, as you can see, I'm just using those edges that I left quite soft and I'm felting those into the top of the head. Keep felting, make sure it's firmly on, make sure there's no loose areas. And then, as you can see from the side, you can see how that dimension really works. Felt it on nice and firmly. And then what you can do as well is you can also felt slightly in from the top so that that ear starts to flatten a little bit. You don't want it sticking out. And then also I'm going to trim the wispy edges that I can see now just before I work on the next bit. I'm going to add some shading because that ear is looking a little bit lost. You don't have to do this, but I just think that because the ear is the same colour as the markings underneath, it does look a little bit lost. So I'm just going to pop some slightly darker carded wool underneath that ear and then I'm just going to shade that out. I'm probably going to add a little bit of white on there as well to colour it and then what I might do as well is just pop some uh, tan wool on top again but a really thin wisp so that that shading that I've just done actually shows through and as you can see already that is standing out much much more. And I'm also going to pop some shading on the top of the ear in a moment. Remember, this is your project, so you can add as much shading or no shading. It just depends on the overall effect if you're working on a specific dog. But I'm just adding some shading here just so that ear pops a little more and really sort of stands out from the face because otherwise it, it was just looking a little bit lost. But if you're working on a specific dog, then you'll be working on particular markings for that dog anyway. 
So now we're going to add the eye. I am going to use a simple glass bead and then add some details around it. But you can needle felt the eye on as well. But the glass bead, um, I love on this brooch because it really pops and adds some shine to your project. Super easy to sew on. Just get your black thread, needle and thread and just sew up and back through where the eye is going to sit and the eye sits where that forehead comes down and then sort of creates that slope into the nose you're going to work in the center of that that's where the eye needs to sit and just a few stitches backwards and forwards just to secure your thread and then you are going to pop that glass bead and it's a four millimeter glass bead i am using you're going to pop that glass bead on to the needle it's got a little hole in the middle and you are just then going to secure it with a few stitches you want to make sure it sits nice and firmly on the face of the jack russell um, you want it to sort of sit as it almost as if it's being pulled into the face so that it doesn't come loose and you only need a few stitches it's really really easy to to do and go up and through the hole as you're doing it and then that way it secures really nicely but like i said you could easily do this with it's a, a tiny ball of black wool with a little little fleck of white in the center to add the highlight but with this glass bead you automatically get that and it's just a really simple way um, of adding the eye and i use this for a lot of projects works really really well and then when that's completed, we're just going to work on some details around the eye. When you've finished, secure it just at the back of the felt, just a few threads through, a few stitches, just to make sure it's nice and tight and secure and won't come loose. And then just, just um, snip that off with your scissors. But as you can see, that's nicely secured, sitting there exactly where it needs to be. Now, before we work on the eye details, do you remember right back at the beginning, underneath the muzzle, we put that dark wool? Well, I'm going to show you now how to create some really fabulous detail using a reverse felting needle. You can add this detail on top of the um, white wool. No problem in doing that. But this just creates a really subtle finish and some really cool markings. So what I'm doing is this reverse felting needle is pulling out the fibres rather than compacting and pushing them in. And as you can see, as I'm using the reverse felting needle, it's pulling that dark wool that we have underneath there that we sat the white on top. It's pulling that through, bringing that dark wool with it. And then what I'm going to do is just trim that. And as you'll be able to see, I'm just starting to create some really nice subtle details around the muzzle sort of representing where the the whiskers and the the hairs of the um dog's face would be and carry on doing that until you're happy with the the finished effect it can be as um, subtle or as dramatic as you like but using this reverse felting needle is a brilliant way of creating that nice subtle finish and i love the effect it creates it's such a great tool to have and something I recommend everyone has in their toolbox. You can use it for so many different projects. And again, you trim close to the muzzle, really close, but make sure you don't cut into the face. And then uh, what that does, is it leaves those little sort of dots that you've pulled through of dark wool. Works brilliantly, works a treat. And the effect is really, really worth it. And you can see now, the more I'm working it, the more those details are coming through. Let me just show you that. I'll bring that close up. There you go. You can see those details. It's subtle, but works really nicely. You don't want too much going on there. Now, working on the eye area, I'm just, again, going back to that sort of black-brown wool I have. I find it's less a, a little less... Um, contrasting than a pure black 
and I'm going to just lay that in a loose triangular shape around the eye and you will see really quickly and simply how this creates some brilliant dimension. I've got a bit too much there so I'm just going to pull that off and just pop that on again. So again just with your 40 triangular needle, remember that's the finer needle if you have one, doesn't matter if you don't but it, um, it is really useful. I'm just creating that nice simple triangular shape with a really thin wisp of wool and instantly can you see how the eye has popped it makes such a massive difference it just really makes that eye come to life and gives it much more dimension and I'm also going to add um, an eyebrow on in a moment as well just to to create even more dimension but look at that it really pops and with that glass eye as well you've got that light shining which just works brilliantly looks quite natural actually even though it's a, a glass eye so what I'm doing now is I'm going to create a, a, a brow so that that's going to lift that eye even further so I've got that tan I've got a little bit of white I've got that black brown just blending that in my fingers rolling in a little ball and then pushing backwards and forwards and what you end up with is a seed shape really small seed shape and that is just going to be wrapped sort of around the top of the eye so it goes around half of the eye just poke that in with your needle I think I've got a bit much there actually I'm just going to take a little bit off that so if, if you've got too much remove it and and make it smaller because you know once it's felted on it's more tricky to do so uh, pop it on and then just around the top half of that glass bead, you are just poking in that wool till it sticks. It's covering the eye, but it's hooding the eye at the moment. But that is, we're going to push that back. What we want to do at the moment is just make sure that that's securely wrapped around the top half of the eye. You could have a really sleepy dog, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to make sure this wool is pushed in. Again, I'm using that 40 triangular because these are the finishing touches. So we, we don't want to leave lots of needle marks. And as you can see, how that is immediately lifting that eye. Work that needle at a diagonal angle as well. And then again, that will make sure that that wool blends nicely into that tan colour that you laid down earlier. So look at the difference that's made. A really, really simple change but that makes all the difference you can see looking from the side how we've got that lovely three-dimensional finish just going to pop that ear down it's sticking out a little bit much for me there you go and you can see and you can see that eyebrow as well how great that looks so that is looking pretty good i'm happy with that i think now is the time to actually cut that out Make sure your scissors are nice and sharp. I'm just going to cut around, leave about a centimetre around. It just makes it easier when you're trimming close to the dog because obviously you don't want to be trimming any bits off that you've just nicely felted. And, and then because we left that black line visible, that is the line we are going to cut around. We're going to get rid of that black line now. But because it's visible, it makes it much easier as well to to cut around that shape so you want to get rid of that now so you're cutting really close to where you felt it but just be careful not to cut into it you don't want to cut any chunks out especially when you go around that ear as well be particularly careful so sort of pull it forward and cut behind and get rid of that line that you felted that you drew on earlier so there we go, we're just about ready. All you need to do now is if it's a brooch is just pop a little brooch back on. You can glue it on or stitch it on. Entirely up to you how you do it. Um, but that is pretty good. I'm really, really pleased with the finish of that. I thought I'd have to go back a few times and make a lot of changes, but I, I didn't, which is, which is fortunate. And then just go around any wispy areas just take your, knee, uh, your scissors close to the edge, make sure you don't cut into it and just cut off those wisps. It's just the easiest way to do it so that you get that really nice smooth finish. Remember this is going to be handled quite a lot. 
but make sure you don't go anywhere just yet because there is another great tutorial coming up straight after this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more tutorials. Here's another one coming up. Thanks for watching.